Hello, welcome to CGRU Artist Review. I'm Kijo Buchanan, host of Jolly Journey. And today my guest is a multi-instrumentalist, singer, songwriter, educator based in Guelph, Ontario, the infectiously soulful, socially charged, Joni Narita. Welcome, Joni. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, please reintroduce yourself and tell us where you're coming in from. I am calling in from Guelph, Ontario, which is west of Toronto for all you Toronto cats. Um, yeah, about an hour and 15 or so west. Just out of town? Or, mm. or you're in town and I'm out of town. And I'm out of town <laughs> in Toronto. <laughs> Yes, which is in the Dish with One Spoon territory as well. Mm -hmm. And um, well, let's dive in a little bit uh, on your work, Joni. I know you've been very busy lately, but um, do you want to just uh, maybe pedal back a little bit and let's start with like some of your influences that got you just into music in general? Mm -hmm. Like what, what started? Like, was it yesterday? Um, was it a long time ago? When did it all start? Oh, goodness. You? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> apparently pretty much out of the womb. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I guess Soul Train was big when I was a baby and I would always like pull up my little walker and like, you know, That's get it. down. Get, in, get into Soul it. Train. Yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of people who made me want to um, or like inspired me to want to perform, not necessarily be a songwriter, but perform anyway. Mm -hmm. um, Whitney Houston, Diana yes. Ross and the Supremes. Um, Bob Marley, who my dad uh, listened to a lot when I was growing up, um, MJ, Michael Jackson, you know, yes. uh, those people from our childhood. And the big stars like from, from the childhood. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, it was like much music and MTV days. So <laughs> <laughs> all of it, all, all, of, all that of that it. stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and what, do, yeah. And so your, your parents, are, are they musicians as well? Uh, no. <laughs> but they're big time music lovers because they're playing all the time. I don't even know if I would say that's true. I, I feel like my dad, my parents, I, I, I'm not, um, I never lived with both my parents. So okay. they split when I was quite young. Um, but when I was at my dad's, yeah, when I was younger, like as in like under 10, he mm -hmm. did play a lot of Bob and um, the Marleys and Peter Tosh. Oh, um, yeah. But I don't know, as I've gotten older, he's not, he doesn't really listen to music the way that he, he used to. And for my mom, it wasn't like an it didn't feel like a need the way that it was for me like i need oh. music as in like it's a consumption for like it's like life. air for you yeah. you know what i mean yeah they don't they definitely don't have that and they definitely don't <laughs> understand why i have it like, <laughs> they don't get audio people they just don't get it <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I often understand. joke like if <laughs> if I didn't look like an even split between the two of them I'd be like am I adopted because I'm not really sure what's going on going here. on here I think it's <laughs> you know what it is it's funny how you said that I mean I I don't know how your family works but in my family I found that yes I do I don't really carry so much my creative like they have appreciation my mother appreciates theater and, and my father appreciates music mm. but they have their appreciations, but I, I think I carry a lot of my like creative um, energy from just certain parts of my family. Like I have a, a certain cousins and certain people that I clearly it's like, yeah, we didn't even grow up together. But right away, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I get you. I, I, get, <laughs> I get what you're all about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think it's like, I, I don't know how it worked for you, but sometimes it just takes time to, to, to either find the family you already have or just create that family. So, so did you, um, how were yeah. you able to create your musical family? Um, I think probably the thing that um, started it like in the biggest sense would be when I went to Humber College for jazz. Um, it was the first time in my life really where I was like surrounded by, you know, musicians yeah, doing exactly. their thing. Oh, there's a trombone player. Oh, cool. There's a upright cool. bass player. Oh, cool. There's a flute, you know, um, yes. I had had like, like, cause I didn't really come from, um, a, a musical high school. And so I would just try to go to open mics sometimes by myself or sometimes with my one girlfriend, Benita. So just like going to like open jams where there's like a house band and you're like, okay, I want to sing. Uh, I'm every woman by Shaka Khan and they play it and you try and sing it out, whatever, you know, kind of like live karaoke. 
but other than that <laughs> and uh and singing lessons i didn't really have a musical family my people were just really not into music in the way that i was uh so it really wasn't until i went to school at humber where it was like okay this is cool awesome awesome <laughs> yeah i like that that's really cool and um so yeah i know that you also mentioned things like um you know in your bio you're talking about like nina simone and and mm -hmm. um and yeah she could be an influence musically but i see that she's also a music an influence in terms of like themes that you're mm -hmm. you're pulling from and yeah. um do you find that you've always used that um, even in your early albums, like Bloom album and stuff like that, like just kind of? Yeah, I mean, Nina's been a, a big influence for a good 25 years now. But like, I guess there's sort of like two parts of my myself in terms of a journey, like before I went to school at Humber and after. Yes. Um, so before, no, I wouldn't say that she was a big influence because I really didn't listen to tons of jazz. Like I knew who she was, but it wasn't like, oh my mm -hmm. goodness, the way yes. Stevie Wonder was. Um, oh, you're a but, Stevie fan. Oh, well, come on. He's the man. <laughs> <laughs> he's the how, man. How could you not, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just take it as no, a given. I, I, if someone I, is I, not into I, Stevie, no. there's something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Nina, when I like really started digging in in my mid 20s or something, um, it was like her sense of uh, just standing in being a black woman and not not shying away from that, not backing down from that. Just like, mm. this is who I am. I make music for my people like that's cool. Y'all white people like it, too, but I'm making it like mostly for my young gifted you know, and like, black and, she, and, I, right? and she's just she's very upfront about performing that song right? and, and, and for for black students and <clears throat> and yes just <clears throat> yeah it was just so empowering to see I mean it still is even though she's long gone I still you know watch her videos and yeah listen to her songs and just think did like, you see summer of oh, soul I really yeah 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 yes <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's true. She's a she's definitely um been a huge influence in terms of um even that quote that she says where it's you know an artist's job is to reflect on the times they're in. I've always I've always felt that anyway, as like myself, uh just me for me. But yes. then having, you know, someone that you sort of look up to musically and creatively being like, yeah. That's the, that's what art's supposed to do. Exactly. <laughs> you know, how many inspiring. love songs do we need? need. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I or, love love songs too, but you know. Yeah, exactly. Or it could be a little more, less romantic and a different kind of love song. This like a love for it. yourself, a love for other things in the world, you know? Yes. And, and that's what it yes. is. Yeah. So I, I get what you mean. You know, yeah. like break away from romance for a minute and think about yeah. all the other dynamics of your There's so much right? to the human experience. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And and Nina got that. I I have to say though, um, before we move forward in the conversation, yes, I, I did mature later. I was in my twenties as well. By the time I was mature enough to really understand and mm. and the scope of Nina mm. and, and her capacity and um you know, as a performer as well, and, and her covers, and she'd go from classic, um, you know, to folk, to, to, to soul, to all mm -hmm. these different corners of music. Mm -hmm. And sometimes she would even, and I noticed you do that a bit. And so that's why I wanted to just talk about that, because she blends in, you know, mm -hmm. um, when she's doing her own instrumental piano and stuff like that. Like she's just, she kind of blends in different um, things. Like it's like, oh, I'm going to give you a little classic, a little jazz. I'm going to give you a little of everything here. <laughs> yeah. And it's all in just one song. And it's like, wow, amazing. <laughs> I know. It's like, you really know what you're doing. How, here, right? <laughs> How did you do that? And um, um... yeah, and it's just so, it's wonderful. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's effortless. It, it sounds effortless, but, mm -hmm. but how would you say for you, like, um, and, and I guess we can dive in into your latest album because it seems like a departure from um, a little bit of a, a departure from from your Bloom album and before, which is like more of a funk reggae mix mm -hmm. of sound 
-hmm. whereas um how how do you say you arrived into this one a few things changed for me for this one uh the first is that i was pretty much leading up to listen or uh, making a uh, love and protest i was listening to a lot of uh brazilian music mm -hmm. and and african music too like west african um music it's instrumental uh, in terms of the african stuff and then in the brazilian world um mostly samba some capoeira music and stuff and so i was yeah i was sort of like being informed by music that was not r b or jazz or you know kind of the mm -hmm. stuff that <clears throat> that often in the west we are sort of supposed to be into or whatever which i very yeah. much i'm still into but yeah yes. i was i was really listening to a lot of south south american music specifically brazilian and i was starting to play more guitar um uh, i play keys as my main you know accompanying instrument um and have for years and i've kind of always played guitar like ish <laughs> you know everyone knows the same sort of campfire songs or whatever but i yeah burst beyond that and studied a little bit with a friend who opened up the neck for me and so i just sort of started exploring uh songwriting through guitar which i really didn't do before and also through looping um because of the Afro-Brazilian influence, I was, uh, you know, buying percussion instruments. And so I would just like loop these grooves to try and see like, okay, where can I, how can I make a groove that feels like me mm -hmm. that I'm not appropriating, but is informed by all this other stuff. So I would yes. just, a lot of my songs on this album, uh, Love and Protest came from me looping stuff and then figuring out melodies and chords on top but the, the foundation was rhythm um okay which, mm -hmm. that's a yeah so i was going to ask you about that because in the i am fire intro sorry i don't quite remember the intro but i it it, it captures me you know that do 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 yes yeah. and, and, and it's just i didn't want to kill it you know it's like i sing a song but <laughs> but yes that's it yeah do 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 and I'm like, yep, yeah, this is cool. I like this. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so yes, yeah, so I, I get what you mean. Like everything is coming from that rhythm base. So what instrument were you using? Do you remember in that one? I don't even remember what it's called because it was just at the studio. <laughs> and it was <laughs> it was this cute little, like uh, it was maybe like this big. Yeah. And it it was was it square like in, in one key a more rectangular it's a rectangular and instrument rectangular okay. extra instrument and almost like xylophone ish in that you play like um little mallets like little, little oh mallets. Mm -hmm. okay yeah so but it, it was it doesn't sound like a kalimba like I was no trying to figure no no it no out. no yeah. it's okay. a similar like i liked it because it reminded me of that vibe like yes. you know kalimba or something like that yeah. but it was actually like a canadian who had made it and it was just like it was given to the studio owner as a gift and i was oh, like wow. oh what's that and i started playing it i was like oh my goodness this would be so dope this on i am the fire exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so i just got in the booth and like just you know made some stuff up and Okay. Yeah, it really like it helped turn the song because I had written that song maybe like six months earlier. So I'd been living with it for a while, had demoed it. Um, mm -hmm. But when I put that on, it was like, oh, it like yes. opened up, up in, a, in whole, a different world. A whole yeah. segment. Because you do, I, I know you you had a TED talk about this, but you use a lot of impro improvisation mm -hmm. um, to do your inspiration right that's true <laughs> yeah and and I just wanted to know like um so what are what well obviously you're really happy about I am fire but are there any <laughs> other songs that you're really proud of you know because you just kind of <sighs> discovered or fell into it kind of mm. I mean I'm pretty proud of the whole album as a whole because yes. Uh, I mean, I've always written and, and produced, but I mixed this album as, as well, which is a first for me. Um, but I guess tracks that kind of stand out, um, the single, if not now, when 
Mm -hmm. it was also a big departure for me because most of it is spoken and I am not a spoken word artist. Um, yeah. So when I first wrote it, it was sort of like, wait a minute, like, mm, I'm a singer. So let me try and like get some singing happening. And the song was like, mm -mm, no. I just want you to speak me like I just, that's it. That's how I'm coming. And this is how it's yeah. going to be delivered. Yeah. yeah. And I tried, I, I tried to like make a melody and whatnot. And it was like, nope. <laughs> So that was interesting. <laughs> right? You just gave in. It's like, this is what the song yeah, wants to be. Yes, and this that's is it. it. This is it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, following that impulse felt like, you know, at these days, it kind of doesn't matter. But we get so caught up in these stories of ourselves and what we think of ourselves and what other people think of us. Like, oh, you're a jazz artist or you're this or you're that. Mm. And so I won't lie and say I didn't wonder like oh well what are people gonna think are they gonna think i'm trying to be a rapper now or whatever and it's been really well received so that's sort of like yes it is it's what, an what excellent was all that song. thinking about <laughs> yeah it's like you're overthinking but like it's like assess the balance right between the improv and where you really mm. need to be it's like yeah. I'm, I'm glad i'm glad you arrived with that song because it's um yeah it's quite impeccable and and um so thank you thank you for sharing that in the way that you know it felt right to share it so <laughs> that's good i'm glad you stuck with that because sometimes it can be very hard um yeah. because you see yourself in one way and it's like no we're not one dimensional we can yeah we can multifacet with um mm -hmm. with our sound mm -hmm. and um and so how would you now with all that understanding <laughs> how would you describe your sound now well that's tricky, isn't it? That is very tricky. Hmm. Yeah. Don't worry. It doesn't have to be CRTC approved or anything. Yeah, just right. Like whatever. That's not going to happen. That's not going to um, happen. So please just tell me what actually makes sense to you. I'm like trying to think, what did I say on my what? Because, you know, you have to like, you have to say something. Yeah, you're going to have you your change your mind. Statement. You got it. Yeah, exactly. So I think I said it's like Afro. Brazilian yeah. jazz Caribbean, tinge, something, something. Yes, like. tinge of pop. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, but <laughs> but I'm hearing something else. <laughs> I know. I you, and 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 of course there is an obvious bias for me because I'm doing a folk acoustic show. So every time I hear a song I like, this is passes, right? This passes, right? <laughs> and then I well, just put it in. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because like. So one of my my best friends, uh, Lisa Patterson, who is um, an engineer and producer in Toronto, um, when I was getting close to being done, I would, you know, like have her listen to my mixes. Like, what do you think? Give me like feedback or whatever. And one night we were, <laughs> we would just like Zoom call and have like our like hangout sessions over Zoom because pandemic. Um, <laughs> and <Sometimes>. one night <laughs> she, yeah, and one night she was like, okay, so like we got to talk about what, like, what is your album? Cause it's like acoustic, electro, there's this like, it's the word that she used. She mentioned the folk word and I was like, I don't think no. I can say it. No, it's just, it's not that it isn't that. It's that the outside perception of what folk is often is like white people with guitars, right? Yes. And obviously I'm not that. Um, <laughs> but it's like, will people get that? It's like, no folk from the perspective of me being, you know, um, a Jamaican or someone who has come from Jamaican parents and the lineage of all of that, uh, mm -hmm. music and heritage and the influence of African music will, mm -hmm. will people get that? So I shied away from, um, even having folk have anything to do with it, but she was sort of like, well, I mean, rootsy, acute, like you gotta, you know, you got to let people know that there's some of that too, because for her yes. as a, as a producer, who's, you know, a lot of us these days are doing mostly electric based drum sounds. That's like, you know, kind of the pop yes. thing or whatever. Um, she was, she said that what she found so refreshing was how much space there was because I didn't use drum kit. I built everything up from, from percussion. And yes. so there's, she was like, there's Which just this, this like spaciousness. Yeah. That's, and this that's kind of that... folky. Uh, I hate to break <laughs> yeah. it to you, Joni, but uh, <laughs> you're a little bit folky over there, my friend. <laughs> it's kind of traditional, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. what can I tell you? <laughs> yeah. 
but these are the conversations that we kind of have to start having even in um in organizations and stuff like yes. re reframing for them what they think folk is or traditional is like it doesn't mean european it doesn't mean eurocentric yeah. music per se you know mm -hmm. and you're doing that a lot of that on your show well um, thank you yeah 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 and which is why i really yeah i really um i really dig and and don't get me wrong like there's different kinds of even in the folk genre and the roots genre people are bringing in different sounds and they have just like you they've done total different things prior right? They have either done some funk, some uh, electronic, experimental, ambient, mm -hmm. and still might be doing it as well. And some artists that come across would consider themselves like folk futurists. And uh, um, yeah, yeah which is why term. I kind of can see you, you know, I'm not, I'm not telling you where, where you should go next, mm. but, <laughs> but it's something you might want to consider. Futurist. Folk futurist, because, um, mm. you know, I've played Dania a year. I've, I've played Valerie June and, and there's so many others as well. Oh. Yeah. And um, yeah, you can just, uh, yeah, I can give you so many names. <laughs> but, pass them but, on, um, girl. Yeah, I'll pass them <laughs> over. And, and, and um, yeah, like Nor Laura Nikwe. And there's just a lot of people who are just kind of going into that, that folk futurist. That's why I asked you about, I know um, genre, I don't think is something that has to stick to an artist personally mm. I was like I understand if that is how you you express yourself you prefer mm. to stay stay with that genre but you know some of us are a little bit more you know experimental and out there and and so For I sure. guess you gotta yeah you, you want to have sure. a little more flexibility in trying a different sound once in a absolutely. while absolutely yeah. And for, yeah, for me, I feel like because of the pandemic, <laughs> it didn't really, the album didn't really work out the way that I thought it was going to be, even though I love it. I thought yes. it would be with more people. Yes. Um, but a lot of it was just me, like, you know, building up stuff at home, um, other than the first couple tracks that I did in the studio and then the pandemic hit or whatever. Um, so I do feel like. I need like at least one go round again in this uh, sort of whatever this genre <laughs> is, yeah. where it's an exploration that I can go even deeper with um, my percussionist friends and stuff like that and just have more, even more of their vibe and influence and different instruments that they're um, playing. Like my one friend, Max, he, um, he, like me, loves a lot of Latin American music, but also has been studying Indian music really intensely and has been studying with this drum master, this little hand drum that's sort of like a tambour, like a, a skin like tambourine. Tabla, but not, but not no, ska, like a tambourine. Tambourine, okay. But like yes. little, it's mm -hmm. got like jingles on the side, but different mm -hmm. kind of jingles, not as like annoying, loud as, <laughs> as the North American vibe, like a little more subdued. And then it has like a doing, doing kind of sound. Yeah, to it. yes, yes, yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. Um. So it's got yeah, that resonance he, and it's, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So I, I very much look forward to you know, whatever I do next, uh, being able to to dig into this sound a little bit more and have it be more collaborative because that's what I had been planning. Um, yes. I, hadn't, I hadn't planned it to be such a solo journey on this album, although it's it's cool because yeah. I feel like I did land in something that feels good. But yeah, yeah. I definitely, I definitely want to like play around in this and hopefully br visit Brazil. Like that's that's yes, thing. <laughs> direct. Yes, just yeah. some direct workshops and some mm -hmm. more international work. Um, mm -hmm. I think that would be amazing to see that next release. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so 2022, Joni Narita will be uh, re-releasing <laughs> her album. <laughs> Love and Protest will expand. <laughs> oh no, I I already have like a good 15. So I yeah, I'm oh, always you already writing. Wrote new oh music yeah, already. I already You're have, like no, no, yeah, that's. I'm That's always so yesterday, writing. Kijo. <laughs> always, I'm always writing. Yeah. Awesome. That's good. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you're you're staying persistently um, inspired in your work. But yes. So any anything else new coming in at, other than um, the more immediate of trying to form that um, the next couple layers in your new songs mm -hmm. in the new year? Was there anything else on the horizon that you wanted to to share with listeners? 
Um, I'll be having a video soon-ish for Let It Burn, which is the first song on the album. Yes. Um, I'm, I got a, a grant from a little organization in Kitchener called uh, Neruda Arts, and so they um, Yes, I follow volunteered. Neruda on, okay, yeah, so online. Okay, so yeah, I'm doing, yeah. I'm doing the video with them. We awesome. started it in August, and then they got busy with their festivals. So now we're, like, reconvening. Yeah, because they're good, great um, festivals. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But they're like, ah, <laughs> we can't finish this right now. <laughs> but <I'll>... Can you <laughs> come back? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, so, everybody's busy, you know? It's like, every, you were yeah. busy last year. <laughs> yeah, so we're, st we're actually ha um, have the second shoot tomorrow, so I'm looking forward to getting back to that and yeah in the new year i just i hope that things are open enough that i can do some touring i'd love to go out west and do some shows out there i would love to i mean it probably won't happen maybe it will happen next year like at the end of the year there's a workshop in brazil that happens in december so i'll probably go next december Oh, excellent! Um, and um, study there for a bit, and maybe stay a little longer, and find yeah, you know, yeah. a teacher that I can study percussion with. Um, yeah. Oh, that would be really cool fellowship out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I hope. I hope. Um, I'm wishing all your dreams come true, Joni. I, oh, I'm, yeah, I, I am really excited for you, and um, so. While we're waiting for Let It Burn video, which might be this year sometime when you and Naruta can get it together and, mm -hmm. and work something out, we'll look out for that. And also for your tour next year. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, yeah, so this is Joni Narita, who's um, sharing all of her insights as well as, thank you. Just thank you for, for sharing that, um, you know, redefining things. And, mm. and not being stuck in a place and, and really you're always moving you're always writing no matter what's <laughs> happening <laughs> you can adjust you're like okay I guess we're doing it this way yep. <laughs> and 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 so sensibly listening you know listening to your own intuition so uh, that is too much of, of your success I'm sure so um, yeah we'll be looking out for let it burn and this is for the love and protest album so if you haven't already um please go to joni's website that's j-o-n-i-n-e-h-r-i-t-a is that right mm -hmm. so if you can uh, please uh link in to joni narita's website and um yeah there'll be links um shared with this audio and video to connect you and um, they can purchase your album right on your website is that correct they can not only you know you can purchase it on apple music and google and all the places where you listen to music digitally but um okay artists make the most when we when you buy direct directly so if that's if that's possible. So it's only available on Joni Narita's website. <laughs> <laughs> right. To it's get extra true, points, but to it's get worth, extra yeah. points for the artist, <laughs> you may want to go to her website. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yes. It's available in all your, your streaming, um, your streaming apps and please, yes, I'm, I'm encouraging everyone, please dive in um, to this uh, new discovery of rhythms of Caribbean and Brazilian music with a touch of electro and, and based all in beautiful percussions. And that is love and protest. And so thank you. Thank you, Joni, for sharing that with me today. And I also wanted to say thank you to our technical director, Karen Young, on bringing this production together. I'm Kijo Buchanan, and this is CGRU Artist Review. Ashe. Ashe.